Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! I've been watching a ton of videos about this subreddit lately. So I decided to take the plunge and sign up so I could share my experience. I'm often mistaken for a Walmart employee, but this level only happened once. I was confused for a Walmart employee like 4 years after I quit in a store I never worked in while wearing 10 5'11 tactical pants. My duty belt and thigh holster was my sidearm in it. A green polo and a ballistic vest with giant reflective letters that said security. I was there getting a sandwich because I didn't want gas station food and Taco Bell was the only place near me I could eat while at work and it was closed. So while driving between client properties, I stopped in to get food. Once I got back to the deli, some couple, yep, Karen and her husband, approached me and demanded I go and check in the bag for a bookshelf. I just looked at them and walked away. I get up front to buy my food and there they are, screaming at a poor CSM who had no idea what was going on. Karen's husband then sees me and like an idiot approaches me and gets inside my personal space to start yelling at me. Remember what I said I was wearing? Yep, loaded gun, can of OC spray, baton, but no taser. Not certified to use one nor do I own one. And it works. At this point, the dude drew the attention of the store's contracted security guard. Poor, unarmed security guard walks up to see what's going on. Before anyone can say anything else, I told her to stay back and call the police. Guy hears the word police and he turned and ran out of the store. Meanwhile, Karen is still yelling at the poor CSM. I pay for my food and call my boss to tell him I'm going to be off all sites for a while. And what just happened? Cops showed up about two minutes after the call because the store security told them some guy was screaming at an armed security guard and they were worried he might get himself shot. Two weeks later, I'm on our problem site, one that had been robbed four times under our care. We weren't incompetent or anything, they just hit when we were off duty. It's like 1 in the morning and I've parked the car in a line of used cars and got the lights and engine to watch the spot of the property where the break-ins occurred. And who do I see looking at cars? Karen and her husband. So first thing I do, call my boss at like 1 in the morning and tell him who I see. I was told to call the police and then get them off the lot. So I called the sheriff's office because they are literally 4 minutes down the road from where I was at and the police were about 20 minutes. And when a deputy showed up, I slid over to that side of the lot and told her the whole story from two weeks prior. Then we made our approach. I initiated contact, told them I remember them and hoped they were fine from the other night. And then formally told them they could not be on a lot outside of normal business hours and that they had to leave. Karen flips and starts screaming. Her husband, clearly very agitated, stomps towards me. At that point, my sidearm came out of the holster and I went into myself from my main job, which was a correctional officer. Went from the nicest guy in the world to, I'm about to make you bite the curb faster than you can blink. Like Dark Helmet to Darth Vader. The deputy pops out to my right taser out, and laser bouncing around the guy's chest. Karen screamed and backed off. Once the deputy came out, I got quiet and let her give the commands. After all, I'm just a security guard. She's the actual law enforcement officer here. Dude sees he's about to be tased and possibly shot, so he complied with her commands. Both of them went to jail that night for misdemeanor trespassing. And no, those two were in the thieves from the thefts mentioned earlier. They were just trying to look at cars without a salesman harassing them. They are just jerks. Those guys were caught a month later when they stole a Porsche that had a GPS tracker in it. That is also the most excitement I've had as a security guard. Most nights I just try to stay awake and not eat too much. English isn't my first language and as the original discussion wasn't in English either, 
It is a bit paraphrased. The bad part of the story is the fact that this story involves some racism as well. I have met with a very nice friend of mine. She is one of the players of a Shadowrun 3rd edition game I run. She would hate if I would call her Roma, even if that is a more PC word. But she prefers the word Gypsy. And she has several perfectly valid and pretty strong reasons for it. Both my friend and I dressed casually, so we really didn't look like store employees. I'm a big guy, tall and overweight. Not as overweight as some obese guys you see overseas, but it slows me down. So even if I'm relatively tall, closer to 190 centimeters to at 180 centimeters and around 100 kilograms, I move a bit slowly, so not that intimidating. My friend is shorter, even with her 170 centimeter muscular body, she's still above average height. So she was a bit taller than Karen, who was more like 160 centimeters or less. Yet, even if my friend is a woman, she can be very intimidating. As she hates the drama with female inmates, she worked in jail before. She thought that the ideal position for her would be in some of the prisons where she can deal with the worst kinds of criminals. Less drama there. Yet, you know, you can't always have the best jobs. So, even without revealing her exact job and position, I have to mention sometimes she has to deal with a lot of Karens and drama queens. Yet, as we discussed the game and her character, she had her tablet in hand, with some spreadsheet open on it. This Karen didn't surprise us, as she was already yelling on the phone. We have seen her with her face all red from anger. At that time, we hadn't seen Karen's story, so we had no chance to recognize her as Karen. Yet, we recognized her as something else. We decided to call her Miss Insignificant. We still preferred to play Shadow Run 3rd Edition instead of later versions. We often point to alternative campaign types. We also point out where its matrix rules, etc. are better. But mostly because we prefer if our characters and NPCs are like living people in a game setting. So we prefer detailed characters, depth and plenty of things. So the people we see might be source material for interesting NPCs. We have quickly decided that Karen looks like a very insignificant wage slave who tries to compensate and look important by acting entitled and rude. Karen was loud enough to make sure that most people around her notice her and already have an opinion. Karen probably had a simple enough mind, already busy with the fact that she is late, angry, and can't find anything. So after hanging up her phone, she looked for help, and she decided we should help her. Too bad she hadn't learned basic manners. So it started without the usual, excuse me, or anything. Instead, she says, you too. Help me find this and that. Now. As my friend was busy on her tablet, it was my time to reply. We don't know where it is. We don't work here. And we don't have time to help you. Do you know who I am? She says. No customer service smile from me. I don't know who she is. But I'm sure she is very unimportant. Probably an unimportant secretary or similar. Not sure. Worst of all, she, like most of the Karens we have read about, decided not to listen. I say to her, someone who hasn't, but she proceeds to slap me. She probably didn't want to hear about how she hadn't learned a few things, manners included. So I was shocked, but also getting angry at this time. Well, Hungarian is quite a colorful language, but when it comes to cursing gypsies, and especially gypsy women can be far more colorful and skilled. And some of their cursings are, well, actual curses. They often name demons responsible for various diseases from anthrax to leprosy. Yet even her colorful cursing usually doesn't name a stroke from all the anger and entitlement. She wasn't in her work-related mindset yet, as it was a bit shocking and unexpected. That was a moment when Karen decided to grab her tablet and yell, now that you don't have that stupid distraction, you should. As it was a surprise move again, she succeeded. 
and she quickly even forgot her own shopping needs and everything. Her simple mind was focused on winning. On the conflict over the tablet and how she wants to prove she is someone superior. It is bad. My first reaction was to try to record everything. Too bad even if we can try to hold her back. Till the police arrive, we aren't allowed to use any violence that might hurt her to give back the tablet. That wouldn't be self-defense. Even holding her back would be risky if we would try anything before she tries to make a run for it. Wait for security? Wait for more staff? Call the police? Not the most effective. So Gary managed to shout how she's going to lecture us. How that is why she has taken the tablet. And she also made a few racist comments. A verbal warning about severe consequences managed to scare Karen, but it didn't make her give back the tablet to run for it. She had a bit of a hit start and as she managed to push a cart in our direction, it made the hit start bigger. Grabbing other carts or pulling some stuff off shelves to be a barrier helped her to run, yet my friend ran after her. The store manager has seen a Karen screaming that a gypsy is trying to rob her, beat her and so on and the gypsy woman chasing her and claiming Karen robbed her. He also has seen a big white guy, me, trying to run after the gypsy woman. So when my friend managed to catch Karen, the manager instructed the security guard to stop my friend. The guard initially tried to stop both Karen and my friend as it would be normal. Too bad the manager told him to catch my friend and let Karen flee. It was maybe a split moment decision but a very bad one. Normally you are expected to cooperate with the security guard and the store manager, but normally they wouldn't be racist. They would stop both parties and we would have a chance to fix the issue calmly. As Karen did enough damage in a store, that manager was already red in anger, too emotional to listen to reason or to know what is right and what is wrong. When a manager lets a thief go, or rob her as she grabbed the items by force, it was violent even before, and there is also excessive force unwarranted by the situation, that is clearly the point where you no longer expected to endure that ordeal, right? Sort of. Self-defense without any sort of warning would be out of the line. As it wouldn't be necessary self-defense and even if the manager and the guard broke the law, they probably weren't aware of that yet and escalating the problem wouldn't be nice. I say, you should release my friend immediately. She did nothing wrong. A simple enough statement towards the manager while my friend tried to reason with the guard. The stupid manager says, no, she tried to rob that woman. You two will pay for all the damage to the store. She will be in jail for robbery and you will be there for helping her. He was yelling. I say, I have recorded some of it. And he replies, so do our security cameras, you jerk. He yelled still. So I tell him, more proof to prove you wrong. If you don't stop this, you will face legal consequences. This is your first and only warning. A stupid manager to the security guard. Catch this slur for helping that racist slur, sexist slur too. Oh, me to the security guard, if you try that. The guard says, I can hold you back till the cops come. You commit a crime and we can act in self-defense. The store manager yelling towards the security guard, I told you to catch that slur. Their kind helps robbers. Oh, so he thought I'm a lawyer. Well, I'm an IT guy. Too bad I have mentioned self-defense and defending others is also an option. Too bad it didn't look like a credible option so far. I have acted mostly calmly and my friend didn't even resist physically. So acting in self-defense didn't look like a credible threat. The security guard had three people yelling at him. The manager, me and my friend. So he was unable to listen. A manager was mad because of the destruction acted racist and he was clearly not thinking straight. But the next moment it all quickly changed. I had warned him about the possibility of self-defense, so my friend quickly ended up on top of the security guard. You can guess, when they tried to protest we just said, I have warned them about the possibility of self-defense. 
and that both their video and ours will prove we were the victims. They helped the criminal, one of them was racist and discriminative, the other used excessive force illegally. The security guard was quick to understand and he said he was just following orders and blamed his job for this. I decided to be a bit witty and asked what kind of crime he wouldn't do on a command of a manager. I mentioned that if two people accuses each other, he should stop them both. But I also mentioned that as the issue was about the tablet, it would make sense to keep the tablets here. So what he did was unprofessional, unethical, unlawful, regardless of who did what. He got my point and started to apologize quickly. While the manager ranted, complained, whined and so on. But my friend called the police and the other relevant authorities. So it was time to show the video which made it clear that Karen stole the tablet and she was rather offensive. So the security guard apologized again. As he was the one who wasn't all emotional and managed to understand what happened. He quickly told any approaching store employees that we acted well within our rights. All this while the manager was still whining. The guard tells the manager, Do you want to end up in jail? Why would I? Discrimination. It isn't a crime. That is true, it's not a crime. But the store can be fined for it. Asking the guard to stop me when I wasn't a threat with a racist comment might be a crime. Too many racist comments publicly? It might be a crime. But breaking professional rules, including rules prohibiting discrimination, can be a crime if it creates some kinds of risks. And getting physical with a guard would create the risk. I hope you can see my point. How he helped the thief to get away with stolen property might be some other legal problem. And if it happened because of prejudice, that is another problem. But to be honest, I doubt if he would be put in jail even for all of it. So they ended up arguing and the manager didn't even apologize. We used the time to decide what to do next. Neither of us wanted to make big legal troubles for the store or the manager, but we wanted to make him apologize. And, and as without his intervention, my friend will probably still have her tablets. We wanted some significant compensation. In pure rage, he was prejudiced. But if he were really racist, he probably wouldn't have the position. And when bad experiences, rage and so on speaks, because someone can't think straight, punishing someone who tries not to be a racist wouldn't help with racism, but we shouldn't lose anything because of it. We expected to wait a lot for the police and maybe some arguments with them too. A self-defense against the manager and having to hold him back is a bit unusual. Yet luckily, two officers arrived rather quickly. They haven't really followed the protocol, but I can't really blame them. One of them says, You better have a very good explanation for this. Yeah, right, we better have. As I'm a big guy, they have probably assumed they have to talk to me first. Sounds reasonable. The security guard tells him they are acting within their rights by holding back the manager till you arrive. I say good afternoon, officer. The security guard is right. We have held back the manager till you arrive. While it would be both very unusual to hold someone for back comments, the stupid store manager says, That wasn't a hate speech. I just said that because... The other police officer says, Sir, I would advise you to shut up before you incriminate yourself. I say, Oh, it wasn't about the racist comments. It was about two false accusations. So let's not hear those comments yet. But I would like to give you some context. Can I show you a little video recording unofficially first? Yeah, that's okay. I have shown him my video recording, focused on the caring part. And I follow with... That is why my friend has called you. Would you be so kind as to let her report that crime? And after that, we can discuss what happened next. But I haven't stopped the video yet. The police officer was okay with that, but still paid attention to us and to the video. I have turned to the manager, but the second police officer paid more attention to our discussion. I say, now let's speak about your behavior. The manager says, I have told you, I'm not a racist. The second police officer tells him, You aren't? Why don't we have the stolen tablet and the thief there then? Why have you accused the victims? I haven't heard an apology from you. You don't try to make anything right. 
yet they are still trying to give you chances to fix it without worse consequences. But, but, but he learned. It is better for him if he's willing to compensate us for both the lost tablet, the lost data and for his behavior. If the police would get involved officially and his bosses would learn about that part, that would be so much worse for him. He would spend far more on lawyers than what he would have to pay for us. If he is willing to compensate for everything and make the problem go away. At first, he wanted to buy a tablet because we lost one and some expensive drinks for his behavior. But it ended up with a tablet of our choice and reasonable range. Still a significant upgrade over the last one. The new tablet was a surface. It was a right choice. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.